I'm originally from San Diego, um, and I started coming here about five years ago. My first route was Mescalito on El Cap. Climbs a series of thin cracks. I had a mentor in San Diego who taught me how to climb. His name was Cliff Walker, and it's been an addiction ever since. I've climbed it 13 different times. My fastest climb was Lurking Fear in 15 hours. So my slowest climb was Mescalito, my first wall, in 10 days, roughly. <laughs> the attraction for me is coming back to El Cap and climbing different routes in different locations. You get a different perspective on life, on the wall. It's taxing. It taxes your abilities, your mental health, your physical health. Everything about it is um, kind of a soul-searching experience for me. The bridge is a kind of a congregatory spot for people of all ages, of all experience levels. You never know who you're talking to at the bridge, you know. It can be you know, somebody really experienced could be somebody getting right into the sport. We usually try to uh, encourage anyone of all experience levels to get up there and fulfill their dreams. When I first showed up, it was it was a little intimidating. You had a lot of people here. Uh, one of the first people I met was Richie Copeland, who passed away last year, who is uh, real hardened, you know, a lot of walls. You didn't know, oh, you're kind of intimidated from certain people, but uh, you know, as the culture goes, you get more into it, everyone opens up and uh, is a lot more welcoming. I learned a lot, uh, everything from you know, different hall systems, to bounce testing, you know, to hooking, you go off in the woods over here and learn how to set up portal edges and give little 15 minute monkey sessions on lowering out and all sorts of different things. I think some people, yeah, haven't paid their dues, but that was me when I first started. I was sandbagged right into it, and you know, we just went for it. And you know, certain things happened to where it was we were past the point of no return. We couldn't bail for certain reasons, but I see that a lot with like newer people just coming and they want to go for it. And you know, bail or not, it's it's good when everyone can make it safely back to the ground and try their hardest as long as, I mean, they're getting up there and they're doing it, unlike people who are just sitting here talking a bunch of smack and they never go do it, you know? Yeah, I mean, sometimes some of these fatalities within the last few years have been pure out of just fate, you know? Like, you'd never, you'd never see it coming. And I believe more like, when it's your time, it's your time. And certain things that have happened to certain people, it's definitely been their time. To go. I mean, just putting cams behind flakes and the thousands of other people have put their cams behind and that one time, that one moment, that one second, it popped off and killed somebody. Uh, it is tragic, but it's a risk that we all take. What brings me to the bridge every day is culture. You know, what this whole film is about is culture. You know, different people, different friends. You see, and it's, it's sort of a it's kind of like the center of the universe, you know, you say somebody's name three times and they appear randomly or magically. And so it's like, it's easy to kill a whole day or a whole week or a whole season here, you know, just talking to people because they show up, you meet with friends and it's hard to motivate sometimes because you're always hanging out, new people, old people, you know. I would say there is a competitive nature if you make it that way, you know. Uh, I don't see any competition in it. There is, I mean, competition, you know, with speed records and sort. I feel it's a more of a friendly competition because uh, us group of wall climbers, are so, we have a, such a small culture that, you know, everyone knows everyone. And so it's more of a friendly competition than a combative um, vibe to it. But for me, I don't, there's not much competition. I'm just here to have fun and climb some more walls. First thing I learned is you never know who you're talking to. And the second thing I learned is when I met Rich Copeland here four years ago, he was telling me, he taught me how to hook, how to hook expanding features, how to nail expanding features, just how to deal with the harder climbing. So 
I, you know, I owe it to him. He's been a mentor of mine ever since, and you know, we try to keep his spirit going. <laughs> the Richie Copeland story. He always taught me to carry, no matter what, three sources of light. That was his, that was his mantra. And so the other day I was up on Never Never Land, got stormed off in a biblical rainstorm and ended up in a waterfall. My main headlamp didn't work. I went to get my second headlamp out of my pocket. It had been on all day in my pocket. So I went for my third headlamp, which was dead from the moisture. Luckily, we had spare batteries. Just another example of LCAP serving up a slice of humble pie.